it's Karen here and I'm here to paint this week's demo painting and we are talking about uh, creating the illusion of warm sunlight on an object. So we're going to do warm sunlight and then next week we will do cool light. So there's a, there's a difference. And a lot of times we kind of, um, we're not thinking about it or our reference photo doesn't really show warm sunlight. It just looks washed out. So we have to jump in and say, hey, I want this to be glowing with sunshine. So what can I do to make that happen? And there's a little a secret and I'm going to share that in today's video. I've selected for our topic today uh, poppies because the color red is a really good color to show this uh, way that we can create the illusion of warm sunlight. So you, once you learn to do it on red, you can apply it to different colors as well. So red poppies are really good. If you're not interested in painting poppies, just know that anything red you can apply this little trick to and really then you can apply that to any color you want. So I'm going to dive right into the demo today and then that way we can ex I can explain uh, things a little bit better visually. So let's talk about what I'm using today. I'm using a piece of uh, 9 by 12 Wallace warm mist paper. Now this is um, no longer available but I bought about 200 sheets of seconds. So every once in a while I'll pull one out. I'm using this today because I want a warm feeling to my painting. So this is a nice warm um, middle value tone so it's going to work really well for the painting. If you don't have this you could easily tone your paper by choosing a similar color rub pastel all over it and you've toned your paper so it's an easy thing to do. I'm also using Terry Ludwig pastels exclusively for this and I am testing out the colors that I selected for my own personal palette which is currently in the works and I will certainly keep you posted when I have more information about that. So I'm going to challenge myself to use this palette alone. I will use some um, new pastels for some final details uh, as well. Now I have already gone ahead and put in my initial drawing but let's talk about the reference photo I'm using. It's a lot bigger than I normally work from because it's an old photo of mine I dug out of the um, my box of reference photos. I used to print my photos big, 8x10, what a waste of paper I was doing because I didn't really need to have them that large. But nonetheless, I pulled it out for today's uh, painting because I like the photo. Also, you will you may be able to tell that it's really out of focus um, and I did that on purpose because I only wanted to see the big simple shapes. I am going to adjust the photo because I don't. I want to paint a landscape format and of course this is in portrait format. So what I did was I did a very quick drawing and, and I don't even know if you can see it, it's just scribbles. I don't really always do this because if I want to really take my time and do a thumbnail it you know is a little bit more involved. This was just like notes to myself. This is where I want the horizon, this is where I want the tree line, this is where I want the flowers. So it basically it's just a card that has some notes on it for myself. Then I went ahead and I transferred that those notes to my paper. I just used a pencil. The idea is I want to have a higher horizon line. I want the trees to be in the distance. They're not important. This is about the flowers. I want there to be this illusion that the meadow goes back into the distance so the flowers in the distance will get smaller. But I'm going to have some larger flowers that are kind of peeking, poking up from the, the foreground. So um, it's kind of an interesting composition. We're looking kind of up and then the background is secondary. So the first thing that I'm going to do is block in the extremes. Now <clears throat> what I'm going to, to do that I'm going to take out the, the new pastels and I want to put in the lightest lights, the darkest darks, and the most intense color. So I'm just going to kind of rummage through here. I want to find a nice, uh, interesting dark. Let's go with the dark blue. Now one thing that we want to keep in mind when we want something that feel like it has the illusion of sunlight, it's going to, we're going to use warm and more intense colors. We're not going to use light colors. You think, 
oh, it's light, I'm going to use a light color. And I will show you sh uh, shortly that that's not always the best way to go about it. So anything that's dark, so the upright planes, which are the trees, and in the, this area right around the flowers leading back to the trees, I'm going to make this dark. And this dark, cool color will allow these red, warm poppies to pop. We need to have the dark and the cool so that the light will shine. Think about it this way. If everything was bright and intense and warm, then you wouldn't be able to, everything would be glowing and you wouldn't really be able to, to judge it as well. I'm gonna, is this, that's not darker. I wanted to find one that's a little bit darker. There's the darker blue. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that in here as well. Now what I want to do is block in the lightest lights and that's going to be the sky. Now in my photo the sky is white and it's white because the <clears throat> it was a, it actually it was a overcast day. We're going to turn this into a sunny day. So I think to make it a sunny day I am going to block in the sky with a peach, a warm color. So this is a pale peach. A warmer color. So we have the darkest darks, the lightest lights. Now we want to put in the most intense color. What is the most intense color in the in this scene? Well, it's the red poppies. Now I'm going to do a lot more to these poppies, but right now I just want to block a few of the main characters in this show that I'm creating. And what I'm trying to do is put the poppies in such a way that they lead me back into the distance. So if I put them everywhere, in the photo, they're everywhere. If I copy them the way they're in the photo, it would almost be too much information. I want to place them so that my viewer's eye can travel back into the painting. So I'm just kind of blocking in these red blobs. Dark is dark. Lightest light, although that'll get probably lighter. Most intense color. And then we want to put a color in, we want to fill the paper with pastel, so we need a color for the, the grassy area. I could put green because the green is grass, but I always like to think what's underneath the grass? What would be growing underneath the grass? And it would, well, what would be there under the grass? And it would be the dirt. So I'm going to put some orange to suggest the dirt color. And what's going to be neat about this orange that I'm putting in is that as the painting progresses, oops, I'll be able to use some of this orange as an, uh, <clears throat> suggested poppies that are in the distance. And you'll see how that comes together when I get to that point. All right, so now I can move these away. At this stage in the painting, oftentimes you will see me blend in this first layer and I'll either use a wet underpainting or I'll use a piece of pipe insulation and I rub everything in. And normally the reason why I do that is because I want to cover up the light paper so that it doesn't become a distraction. In this case, we have this warm brown underneath and that's not going to be a distraction. In fact, it will probably provide a little warmth and, and harmony. So I'm not going to blend it all in this time, which means I can go get jump right in and start painting. So I'm going to jump right in and start painting and the first thing I'm going to do is reinforce the dark areas. Reinforce the dark areas. So the dark areas are the trees in the distance and I'm using a dark blue, like a navy blue, dark cool blue. I will be modifying these tree shapes because I don't want them to be this dark. But I'm starting them off as a big dark shape so that I can modify them. If you look at the photo, you see blobs of dark. One, two, three, four blobs of dark. If I was literal to the photo and copied it just like I see it in the photograph, I would end up with a very spotty painting. So I am combining my dark so I have one big dark area that I will modify and I'm going to bring that dark blue into the 
<clears throat> what I call a suggested eye pathway. So this is going to pull your eye back because of this dark. If I don't put this dark in now, it would be really hard to put the dark in later. I'm going to go over with another layer of dark. This is a dark burgundy. Just because I want a little bit of more of interest in the, in the dark shapes. Now, let's do one more layer. Let's add a violet. So we'll add a little purple. I'm using big broad strokes with the side of my pastel at this stage in the game. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do normally would be to address the lights, which would be the sky, because then it sets the whole tone and the mood and you know what kind of day you're trying to paint. But before I do that, I want to add a little bit more greens to the trees so that I know where to break up the tree shapes with the sky. So I have one, two, three blobs of trees, and I want to create depth. So I want this tree mass to be in front of this one. And this maybe could be in front of this one. This one will be in the distance. So because it's in the distance, it's going to be lighter and cooler than the others. So I'm adding a blue-gray to this tree mass. In fact, it might even be a little bit lighter. So I'm adding a lighter blue-gray. The idea being push that back into the distance. This is in front of this, so it's not going to be quite as... That might be a little too light. Let's try this. Oops. This is a blue-green. So it's a kind of a cooler green. But it's a little bit darker than this, so it comes forward. This is going to be in front of all of these, so I'm going to use a warmer green. Start with a dark warm green. And then at this stage in the game, I have to say, okay, before I go any further, I really need to take a minute and establish where the light is coming from. Uh, if I don't, then I'm not going to know where to put the light and where to put the shadow. So the photograph is overcast, so I'm going to get to decide where the sun goes, and I'm going to just keep it simple and make the sun come uh, over on the right, and then everything on the right side will have sunlight, the left side will be more in shadow. So now that I have decided that, I can start to add a little bit of a warmer green oops, to where I want it to feel like the sun is touching that foliage. And this over here gets just a touch. Oh, that's not going to be a good one. Let's just put some of this over here. I want, remember, I want to keep that in the distance. I almost feel like I don't really like that kind of purpley color, gray purple that I put in. I'm going to put a bluer, a gray blue, which I like. That feels like it's further back. Now, I can adjust these tree shapes, but I have to remind myself, here, and remember what you said in the beginning, it's not about the trees, it's about the flowers. So this might be enough information. I might not need to do any more. All right, let's then move on to the sky. It's a blue sky, sunny day. So I'm going to use a nice, clear blue to paint the sky. I don't want it to be too dark of a value, or it might look like nighttime. So I'm using a couple of different cool blues. But as I get closer to the horizon, we know that the sky gets a little bit warmer and lighter. So I'm putting in a more of a turquoisey blue-green as I come closer to the horizon. And I'm using this color to kind of carve into the tree shape so that I can get a little bit more of an interesting silhouette to my trees. And again, I can come back and adjust these. I just want to get, the, the, get it started in here. And all, I want to remind you, when you're painting, at this, you really need to make sure that you take time to step back. Because I'm on top of it and I can't really see what my shapes are looking like. Are they too much the same? Is there enough variety? And sometimes when you step back, you can start to see things a little bit more clearly. So, that's just a reminder. 
I don't remember, I don't always remember to do that, so it's important to start to make that a habit. I right, know I'm going to move on, and we might come back and adjust this, but we might not. It might be fine. So I want to then start to adjust, uh, uh, address the flowers and the field. And the flowers I'm actually going to save to last, and I think that's kind of funny. I always think it's funny, too, because it's like the flowers are the most important thing, and yet I wait until the very end of the painting to paint the flowers. So the first thing I'm going to do is reestablish the dirt color. And what, what this really is, is not just the dirt color, but it's going to be the distant flower masses. So I'm using a uh, darkish salmon red. So this is a cooler red back in the distance. And the idea is these are supposed to hint at the fact that there are... Um, Poppies growing all the way to the distance. Let's put a little bit more of that in there. And we're going to break this up with some of the green as well. We already have some good dirt uh, under here. So the orange dirt, I'm going to just leave that alone. And I think what I need to do is start to introduce some of the greens. We know that in the distance the greens are going to be lighter and duller and cooler. So I'm going to pick a, a um, really nice neutral grayed down green. And I'll put a photo of the palette that I'm using so that you can see these colors up close. And I'm using it and I'm just breaking up some of the red salmon color that I put down. I'm going to use another kind of gray down distant green, I call it. And one thing that I'm noticing now, and I'm like, nah, this could be a little bit more interesting, is look at how the top edge of my meadow is just one big straight line. So it's not as interesting. So what I want to do is kind of make some adjustments before I go too far. And I want to pull this big, bigger tree mass forward a little bit. I'm going to change. And I'm going to leave that one, well, I need to pull that a little bit out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that distant green, and I'm going to go ahead and add it to the distance back here so that I can create another layer in my meadow. Well, that's going to be the flower. So now I have another layer in the meadow, and then this area up here is starting to get a little bit more, a little brighter still a cooler, duller green, but it's a little bit brighter than the one in the distance. So what I've done is, in, is just taken a few strokes and created a layer in my meadow, which is a lot more interesting than one just straight line going across the page. All right, so now I'm going to come in and put some darker green on top of that suggested pathway because we want it just that dark area. We want it to be there, but we don't want it to be the only thing or the first thing you see. So I need to break up that dark shape just a little bit. So I'm adding green on top. A little bit of a cooler green in there as well. And now I can continue with my green grass meadow. Notice, I don't know if you noticed, but in the distance I was using um, horizontal strokes, bands, as I come closer to where we can actually see where the grasses are, are growing and the stems. I'm going to start to uh, change the direction of my marks so that the grasses are more in an up and down marks. More up and down marks. I'm going to add a little bit more of a warmer, more yellowy green into the mix. And do you notice something that's happening, and I have to really uh, take care of it right now, is I have lost my flowers. Where do, they, where do they go? So I need to put them back in. And I'm going to put them back in by uh, using a red violet. I'm going to talk, tell you why in just a minute. We had one there. We had one there. I think we had one over here. Don't get stressed if you if this happens to you because look at how easy it is for me to 
reintroduce those flowers. Really, it's not hard at all. On the sanded paper, I have quite a few uh, layers left. All right, I am going to do something though. Before I finish the flowers, I'm going to give a very quick spray with the workable fixative just in the grassy area. And I'm actually letting the, the spray spit by holding down the, the button so that it l gives out little drips and spits. And this is normally what you don't want to do. Like if you're trying to spray your painting and you want it to, you know, be sealed, which I never do, you don't want to do this. You don't want this. But I want texture in the grass. Look at the photo, how we have all these pods, these seed pods. These are going to kind of hint at that, some of that texture. So now I'm going to paint one of these poppies just to show you how I go about doing the poppy. Notice I haven't drawn the poppy because if I draw it, I'm going to color it in and it's not going to look as natural as if I just use the side of my pastel and make marks to uh, represent the petals. So I start with the dark, cool um, red violet. And now I'm going to use another cool, I call this one a brick red. Let's actually paint to it at once. And I'm going to just, I'm looking at my photo just to kind of see how some of these, um, well, we'll, do, we'll just do a few while I have it in my hand. I'm just using the side of my pastel to kind of create those petals. Now, they are lit by the sun. When I look at a photo of something that's lit by the sun, and there's some sun in here, this isn't really um, showing much, but in here you can see it's got like a lighter, paler, paler red. So a lot of times we think, okay, if I'm painting something and it's lit, I need to use a lighter value. And here's an example of using a lighter value. So a lot of times we by default say, oh, okay, so that's got to be kind of a peach color. And then when it really gets sunlit, we make it just lighter. Oops. And oh, we do the same thing with grass. We say, oh, this it got sunlight on it. It's going to be a lighter, paler green. Make note of this when I'm going to come back to it. But what we end up doing is we end up with something that looks washed out. It doesn't look lit by the sun. It just looks like it has um, volume, of course, but not sunlight. So what we want to do instead is we want to go towards the sun. And so if, we're, if we have red, if we think about the color wheel, yellow is up at the top where the sun is, we want to get warmer and more intense rather than lighter. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to make a warmer red. This is a red that has some orange in it. And now look at how it's starting to glow, whereas that really pale value did not really give that illusion of sunlight. It just kind of made it lighter. Actually made it wash out. Alright, so it's starting to pop, but we can get it to pop even better if we keep going warmer and add a little bit of orange. So this is a, a, a kind of a yellow-orange color. And again, I don't want to put it everywhere on every flower, just work because I remember I want the eye to kind of move throughout this painting. So I can actually, if I really wanted to, I can go even warmer. So here I'm putting in a little of a, of a yellow orange and this is really starting to make it glow. They are really popping. So the idea is go warmer and more intense and not lighter in value and things will start to get that pick up that glow that you want. Let's add our little centers. Some of these are showing the centers and some of them aren't. Depends on how they're situated. That one does. Um, I like to add a little uh, blue to the centers. It just kind of makes it, makes it pop a little bit more. And now we have poppy flowers that are just kind of floating. So we have to give them some stems and ground them a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is uh, because we know there's poppies in the distance, I'm going to take a uh, kind of a duller orange and just put smaller little marks to represent the poppies in the distance. And then I'm going to add some warmer greens in the grasses. 
with big strokes of my pastel. And then I really like these little seed head, so I'm going to take some darker greens, pressed a little too hard there, and make some little um, marks like this. I'll, I'll come in and add other greens. This is a little bit of a cooler green, just to represent some of those seed pods. And the last thing that I'm going to do, and I'm kind of rushing through this just because I, the main gist of today's vi uh, demo is how to create that glowing light. I'm going to just come in and add some stems on just some of them. We don't want them to look like balloons, so we're just going to use a nice broken line to create some grasses, some stems. And what I'm going to do for this painting is I'll take a picture of it now. I'll work on it just a little bit more. I'm not going to go crazy. I probably won't touch the background much at all. I might add a little bit more interest to the grasses. Uh, I will sit and evaluate it with my punch list and decide what I'm going to do. And then I will share the, um, the finished painting. But for the most part, I would say it's 97 and a half point. <laughs> percent finish really doesn't have much more to go just a, a few uh, a few marks but the idea is I you want to go warmer and more intense not paler in value and I'm going to share a special tool we, tool with you this week that's going to help you so I hope you've enjoyed this demo and let's paint